As you go through your first few driving lessons, you'll begin to realize that there's a lot more to driving than you first thought. So it's important not to lose heart at this stage or to become overwhelmed by all you have to do. Right now is when you need the feedback and support of a really good driving instructor who will reinforce your learning and help you through the various steps. This is the time when you need to find out what you're doing wrong, but also find out what you're doing right. It's a good idea to focus on the different steps of learning and concentrate on doing each one right. This way you can continue to practice and understand each element. You ask questions, you make mistakes and you learn from them. And you continue doing this until the process of driving seems more fluid and easy to do. And now that you're feeling more positive about the task that you've taken on, you realise that you can indeed achieve your goal. You should be able to reverse into a parking space, change gear or even do a hill start. The final hurdle is closer to you, taking the car out on its own. Michael found the experience of going back to education as an adult very different to going to school as a child. Making the decision himself made all the difference and gave him the motivation to learn. Well, I never went back if someone was forcing me back. But I made the choice myself, and making the choice yourself is the important thing. When I went back, to, I said, read and write better was one of my goals. Mm -hmm. And the second goal was to do my junior cert, and I have that done. So my third goal now is to do my leaving cert. If you didn't have a goal, it would be hard. Trying to get motivated, it would be hard. You'd have to have it. And once you're, you give it a good go and practice at it, and that's what it's all about, is practicing. The more you practice, you can come as good as anyone. You need to be persistent in learning. You have to stick at it. And it's just like what I'm doing now with the jigsaw puzzle. Because at the end there is a finish. And you can see it coming together like my jigsaw is coming together now. Well, I keep all the things I've wrote. And, and uh, sometimes then if it, the teacher shows you what you wrote maybe 12 months ago, total difference. You wouldn't think it's the same even handwriting. When I see my achievements, it makes me very proud. I feel very proud of what I've done. In the learning, I'm only at the beginning of it. Tip of the iceberg, I believe. I have the bog now, as I say, I have the bog. One thing that will affect your motivation is how much you are stimulated by what you are learning. It's important not to let boredom or fatigue set in because then it's easy to become distracted. The best thing to do is to go away from it and come back to it afresh. Another factor that can affect our motivation in a very positive way is the fact that adults tend to want to master new tasks and become more effective at what they do. We all have this desire and it helps to keep us going and learn throughout our lives. What we learn goes in here and the more we learn, the easier it becomes. Thanks Eddie. Now, as you can see, Eddie's going off and he's leaving me here all alone, stranded. So what I need now to find my way around is the ability to read signs. Some signs will be very familiar to all of us. For example, pedestrian crossings and other road warning signs, where they often use symbols rather than words or letters for the signs. Some signs will be written completely in capital letters and others in capitals and small letters. Some signs also have arrows indicating the direction to follow, left or right. Sometimes an arrow will be pointing up, meaning go straight ahead. Because you'll meet such a variety of signs every day, we've put together an exercise in the Read Right Now workbook, which you might like to try. It works like this. On the right side of the page is a list of signs directing you to different facilities in a leisure centre. On the left side of the page is a description in words of what you might be looking for. The idea is to match the description to the sign. The first one is done for you. If you're looking for a round bath with swirling water, that'll be the jacuzzi, which if you follow the arrow on the sign is off to the right. <laughs> Three years into his journey of learning and with his junior cert under his belt, Michael feels there's still a lot he wants to achieve. 
I mean, I left school at 16, like, like I mean, you know, coming a teacher or anything else or, you know, I had none of them aspirations, but now I have. If I, you know, it might take longer for me, but it's there, I have all the time in the world to do it. You can go anywhere in education if you want to. Yeah. Education has made me happier in myself as a person. Being able to read and write now, way better, like, you know. You know, I can go into a shop now and buy most books and read it. You know, I might have a small bit of difficulty with some spellings, but just, I feel I'm very near to it, at grasping it. I can see it even when I'm driving along the road myself. I look at the sign of a, of a town and that, and I said, Jesus, I can spell the bloody thing now. And before, I never even took notice of it. There's a terrible awakeness there or something, even a book. You know, I just pass places now, like, I mean, I never even spelt them, but I can spell them all now. I mean, it's great. And it's only the beginning, I hope, of a new experience for me. And there is big changes in my life. Well, I stopped smoking uh, two years ago when I joined Vitas. And uh, if I didn't join Vitas, I'd, be, I'd still be smoking. Because uh, before I joined Vitas, like, I mean, I'd smoke a cigarette for any crisis that came into my life. But now, like, I mean, since I've joined Vitas and stopped smoking, any crisis comes, I'll handle it. I don't need a cigarette or anything else. And that's all down to learning. I got married two months ago as well, so that was another thing. Whether that's got to do with Peters, I don't know. There are certain things that impact on your motivation as a learner. One thing is your attitude. Whether you feel positive or anxious about what it is you're taking on will affect your learning. Another thing is how much you feel you're going to benefit from what it is you're learning. Keeping your goal in mind will help to keep you motivated. Walking around this gym and seeing all of the activities that people are involved in, there's a real sense of something being achieved. And that's the ultimate payoff. When you set goals for yourself and you work on staying motivated as you learn, all the time you're working towards that great sense of achievement you're going to get when you've completed the task or you've learned whatever it is you set out to learn. The letters of the alphabet come in all shapes and sizes, but there are two important differences in the way letters are written and used. Each letter can be written in two ways, as a capital or block letter, and secondly, in its more usual form, as a small letter known as lowercase. When you're writing, there are some rules to follow regarding when and where to use capital letters. You always use a capital letter at the beginning of a sentence. The word I, when it refers to yourself, is always a capital letter, no matter where it comes in the sentence. You also need to use a capital letter for the name of a place or person. The days of the week and the months of the year also always start with a capital letter, as well as the titles of books, films and newspapers. Another time when you'll see a capital letter used is when a word is shortened or abbreviated. For example, Radio Telefisharen is usually shortened to RTE and the National Adult Literacy Agency is written as N-A-L-A. -A. People often shorten a title like Doctor to capital D, lowercase r, full stop, or Reverend to capital R, lowercase e, lowercase v, full stop. If you would like some help with anything we've covered in the programme, call 1-800-2020-65. There's a team of specially trained tutors standing by to take your call, Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's free and confidential, so call now. Here you are, Terry. Oh, Terry Kai, yeah, I was lost in that view. Yeah, it's pretty amazing, all right. I was having a look at it on the way over. Well, let's sit down here then. Okay, and we can have a look back at what we did in today's programme. Well, there were two things we explored. Motivation, how important that is in learning, and then how setting goals and sticking to them is essential. We also looked at verbs, the action words. Verbs are action words and every sentence needs a verb. For example, swim, wait, play. Verbs change according to when the action took place. For actions which happened in the past, I walked to town yesterday, you add ed to the end of the verb. If the action is happening in the present or the future, the rule is to add ing to the end of the verb. We looked at some of the reasons why people might be motivated to go back to learning. Maybe they want to help children with their homework or they'd like a promotion at work. Either way, the learning's got to be relevant to what's going on in their own lives. 
we considered how you go about achieving your goal. For example, if you want to learn to drive a car, you break it down into smaller goals like gear changes, reversing or doing a hill start. All of these will make it feel achievable. And we looked at how to measure speed and distance. In the metric system, we use kilometres and metres to measure distance instead of miles and yards. One kilometre is equal to 1,000 metres. And kilometre is usually written as km and metre written as m. Many people like to estimate how long a journey will take. And to do this, you need to measure both the distance and the time. So if you're driving at a constant speed of 40 kilometres per hour, this means it'll take you one hour to travel 40 kilometres. We saw how important it is for you not to get overwhelmed. If you concentrate on the small steps, then the bigger picture will fall into place. We then looked at how to read signs. Some signs are very familiar, but it can be confusing in places like hospitals, airports and shopping centres, where there are a great many signs. Some signs will be written completely in capital letters, and some with capitals and small letters. And others will have arrows indicating which direction to follow. It's important to stay positive. Think of the outcomes of your learning. That's when you're able to do what you want to do without effort, because you've put the time in when it counted. And we looked at capital letters. Each letter of the alphabet can be written in two ways, as a capital or block letter, and as a small letter known as lowercase. Capital letters are used at the beginning of a sentence and I, when it refers to yourself, is always a capital letter. The names of places and people, the days of the week and the months of the year always start with a capital letter, as well as the titles of books, films and newspapers. That's it for this week. Next week we're coming to you from Dublin where we're looking at feedback and how important it is for you in the learning process. So until then, from us, goodbye. <laughs>